Okay, we're finally now going to be able to say something about the skater who pulls her arms in and spins faster. It's uh, the topic of angular momentum. So an ice skater spins with both arms and, and a leg outstretched. She pulls her arms and leg inward and her angular velocity increases. She spins faster. Why? This is a demonstration of the conservation of angular momentum. I have a couple of, uh, looks like five pound dumbbells in my hands. I've got a platform that spins freely on its axis. I'm going to stand on this platform and then have my able assistant, David, come over and give me a spin. And then what I would like to do then at that point, I'm going to start with my arms out and then see how close I can bring the weight into my chest. Okay. <laughs> you can see my tie flying up. So uh, ice skaters use this principle. They start off in going to their triple toe loop uh, with their arms far apart or away from their bodies. Then they bring their arms in close and their legs in close to their bodies so they spin fast. The reason is conservation of angular momentum. The axis through which they're spinning is vertical. The moment of inertia is bigger if there's more weight far from the axis. And as the moment of inertia decreases, the angular speed must increase. And that's conservation of angular momentum. Okay, so on this one, um, I make the claim that if the moment of inertia decreases, then the angular speed increases, and that's because of conservation of angular momentum. After this next demo, then we'll actually define the um, angular momentum to be the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. But before that, let me show you one more video. This is a Hoberman sphere. You can expand it and contract it using this string. What I'm going to do is to use it to demonstrate the conservation of angular momentum. Uh, the axis, I'm going to rotate it about this vertical axis, and, and that axis is also denoted by the string that passes vertically through the sphere. We will um, note first that the moment of inertia in this, con this expanded configuration is much larger than the moment of inertia in this contracted configuration. So what we can expect is that if we give it some angular momentum in the expanded high moment of inertia um, configuration, and then we contract it, its angular speed should increase. And sure enough, it's one of the most uh, spectacular demonstrations, I think, of conservation of angular momentum. Okay, finally, uh, as promised, the definition of angular momentum. It's denoted by the um, letter L and So this is angular momentum. It's the product of two things, the moment of inertia and the angular velocity. You say, well, is there an analogy with translational motion? And I say, yes, there is. Do you remember the linear momentum? It's the product of two things. What are they? You're right, mass and velocity. Well, what's the angular equivalent of mass? Moment of inertia. The angular equivalent of velocity? Angular velocity. The angular equivalent of linear momentum 
Here's the angular momentum. It's right straight across. Uh, I is the moment of inertia. Omega is the angular velocity in radians per second. This whole chapter will will measure these velocities and um, angles and angle in um, radians per in radians. The units of angular momentum are going to be the units of moment of inertia, kilogram meter squared, times the units of omega, which is radians per second. So we get the kilogram meters, per se meters squared from the moment of inertia, and then we get the per second from the angular velocity. So uh, finally, we, uh, the last concept in this chapter, I believe, is the total angular momentum. A couple of chapters ago, we talked about total linear momentum. Now we're talking about total angular momentum, and asking, we're asking a question about when angular momentum is conserved. The total angular momentum is the sum of all the angular momenta in the system. So the total is just the sum. In the same way, we define the total linear momentum as the sum of all the momenta in the system. And that total is conserved, the total angular momentum is conserved when the work done by external torques is negligible. You might remember that linear momentum was conserved when the work done by external forces is negligible. So now we have three different conservation laws. Um, conservation of energy. It's conserved when the work done by non-conservative forces is negligible. Uh, linear momentum is conserved when the work done by external forces is negligible. And angular momentum is conserved when the work done by external torques is negligible. Do some examples. The angular momentum of planets um, orbiting around the sun, of the moon orbiting around the earth, and of satellites orbiting around the earth, the angular momentum of all those systems is conserved. And so you can use conservation of angular momentum to find, if you know what the, what the speed of an orbit is at a certain radius, and if the, if the orbit isn't circular, you can figure out the speed of the orbit at other points in the radius. It's pretty fun. And this is an example of that. The perigee of a satellite, uh, perigee means the point of closest approach, and the, the way that I remember that is that a periscope is what you use in a submarine to bring things closer to you. I don't know, that's how I remember it. And the apogee is the point of, uh, of far th where the satellite is farthest away in its elliptical orbit around the Earth. The Earth, uh, by the way, the center of the Earth is at one of the foci of this ellipse. There's another fo focus right here, there's two focuses, but it, the, the satellite only needs one and that's where the Earth is placed. So we're given that the perigee, the point of closest approach, is 8.37 times 10 to the 6 meters from the center. So that's this distance here, RP, from the center of the Earth. Its apogee, so that's the radius at the apogee, is 2.51 times 10 to the 6. The speed of the perigee is 8450 meters per second. And the question is to find the speed of the apogee. Simple problem with conservation of angular momentum. How do we know that uh, angular momentum is conserved for this system? It's because there are the work done by external torques is negligible. In fact, there are no external torques. If we draw a dotted line around the Earth satellite system, um, well, actually there are some external 
torques. There's the torque due to the sun. But that, let's see. Yeah, um, that's going to be negligible in this particular case. And if you're uncomfortable with that, just take the Earth and the satellite way out in space. But for now, we're going to ign ignore that um, there are no external torques, at least they're negligible, and we're going to conserve angular momentum. Well, what's angular momentum conservation? What is a conservation law? A conservation law is when something doesn't change. The energy doesn't change. The linear momentum doesn't change. And in this case, the angular momentum doesn't change. The angular momentum of this um, satellite is going to be the same here as it is here. Although here it's not going to be traveling as fast. How do you know that? Well, here it'll be traveling at whatever tra speed it's traveling. And as it's on its way out here, Earth, it's, it's moving away from the Earth. And the Earth is pulling it back and slowing it down. So we expect it to slow down because the Earth is trying to hold it back until it reaches this apogee. And then, when it's on its way back toward the Earth, the Earth is pulling it toward it and is going to be speeding it up. So it'll reach its highest speed here at perigee and its lowest speed at apogee. And conservation of angular momentum allows us to calculate what those, what those two speeds are. So, the angular momentum doesn't change, but what does change? Well, the angular velocity changes. And um, the moment of inertia at the apogee is going to be, and the moment of inertia is always equal to mr squared, and there's only one object that we're thinking about. It's just this, uh, this satellite. And so its moment of inertia is going to be its mass times its radius at the apogee squared. So there's the moment of inertia at the apogee. Here's the moment of inertia at the perigee, mr squared again, but, it, but the only thing that has changed is the radius at the perigee. Times omega, well, um, the angular speed, so this angle is changing with time, and the angular speed is of an object moving in a circular motion, as we talked about, is, uh, it looks just like that. So we can solve, just like we did in the previous problem, for omega, it's v over r, and we're going to plug that into here. Omega is V over R. So here's the speed at apogee divided by the radius at apogee. Do the same thing here. And then uh, some marvelous cancellations happen. Uh, the, mass is, the mass of the satellite cancels. Uh, this uh, RP in the denominator kills one of the RPs in the numerator. Same thing hap happens over here. And we get RA times VA equals RP times VP. And um, we now know everything except for VA, and we solve for it by dividing through by R sub A. Plug the numbers in, and we get a speed of 2820 meters per second. At the apogee, which is clearly less than this speed at perigee. So these satellites come in, uh, they come in close, they're going fast, they go further and further and further away, but in that process, angular momentum is, is conserved. Angular momentum is not changing, it's just the angular velocity that's changing. Another demonstration of angular momentum, lots of great demonstrations in this chapter. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations of conservation of angular momentum with this wheel. I'm going to get it spinning and um, then do a couple of different things with it to transfer angular momentum between the wheel and my body with this vertical axis of rotation. So there's one way. Um, I can 
manipulate my position by changing the axis of rotation of the wheel. If I want to go left, the wheel tip the wheel up that way. If I want to go right, tip it down that way. And the, the way that I'm able to do this is that this at, when, when the axis of rotation of the wheel has a vertical component, then it's going to transfer some angular momentum to my body, etc. And come back around front. That. That's conservation of angular momentum. <laughs>